Good morning, everyone. Please open your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 18. As we come to the end uh, in our sermon series from this letter, I trust that it's been of great spiritual value to you as we firstly looked at 1 Thessalonians uh, and now for the past uh, three weeks we looked at uh, 2 Thessalonians. I trust that uh, it has helped you in your understanding and I trust that you have been encouraged in your walk with the Lord. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 18. But before we look at God's word, come let's pray. So Father, we give you thanks for all that we have learned uh, through these two letters, First and Second Thessalonians. But Lord, I pray that it wouldn't just be head knowledge. I pray, Lord, that it will be heart knowledge. I pray, Father, that we will remember the truth of your word and that we'll apply it to our everyday living. Father, that your word may make a lasting impact in our lives. We pray, Lord, that the good seed, your word, may fall on good soil and bear much fruit in our lives. Father, help us to give the hearing of your word our undivided attention. Speak to us now, we pray. Lord, we continue to pray for our church. We lift up every member before your God. We commit each one of them to you. Father, we pray your blessing upon them. We pray, Lord, that indeed you may provide for them as necessary. We continue, God, to pray uh, for our country. We lift up the leadership of our land. Father, we pray that you'll give them uh, much insight, uh, much wisdom, O oh God, as they think through and work through issues uh, relating to uh, COVID-19. Father, soon we'll be uh, back in church having fellowship with our people. Lord, we, we look forward to that day. And we pray, Lord, that many uh, will come back to us. We pray, Lord, that uh, many wouldn't have lost interest uh, in church or in fellowship, uh, but that they'll see this as a wonderful opportunity to come back and have fellowship with your people. So we look forward towards that day. And so, Lord, as we open your word now, speak to us, we pray. In Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. Friends, the title of my sermon this morning is Concerning Other Matters. And as we examine this passage before us, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 18, I want you to notice that there are four matters that the Apostle Paul draws to our attention. Firstly, he reminds us there in verse 1 of the priority in prayer. The priority of prayer. Have a look there at verse 1. Listen to what he says. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not everyone has faith. The priority of prayer. Friends, as one reads through uh, the Acts, uh, the book of Acts, and I trust that you'll do that, and uh, the letters of the Apostle Paul, uh, it is undeniable that he was an extremely gifted evangelist teacher, pastor, and church planter, who just like you and I uh, was subject to temptation, the pull of the world. Therefore, he understood the priority of prayer. My brother, my sister, I trust that that will be true for you and I this morning as well, that you and I uh, will come to understand the priority of prayer in our lives. And as we reflect on Paul's prayer, I want you to notice two things uh, from these verses. Firstly, notice that his priority in prayer was for the gospel message. Listen to his words there again in verse 1. He says, pray for us that... The message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you. 
You see, Paul's desire was that the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel message, may spread rapidly far and wide to all people across all languages and culture groups. The picture here is of an athlete running well ahead in the race without any obstacles slowing him down. Uh, recently we have seen uh, in California uh, how rapidly wildfire can spread. One day the fire is here just burning in one place and the next time you look it has spread rapidly and burning in many, many places. Can you imagine, my brother, my sister, God's word spreading like that? Spreading rapidly into every corner of the world. Spreading rapidly into the hearts of men and women. And so the Apostle Paul here, as he understands the priority of prayer, he says, pray for us. But his priority is first for the gospel message. You see, Paul desires that the gospel message, God's word, be honored or that it be well received wherever it is proclaimed, just as it was well received here in Thessalonica. You'll remember when the apostle Paul, Silas and Timothy uh, first came to the city and began to teach God's word, uh, the response was very positive. Many, many people believed the message. And so Paul is praying for the same thing here for God's word, the gospel message. He says that it must spread rapidly, quickly, without any obstacles in its way. And as it spreads, and as people hear it, and as people uh, listen to God's word, they may respond positively. They may believe the message of the gospel. Paul's priority in prayer. Pray for the message. But secondly, his prayer request is for himself and his team. Silas and Timothy. Of course, the Apostle Paul uh, is the key leader here. But he knows the value of teamwork. So the Apostle Paul understands how important it is to have Silas and Timothy with him. And as he prays for himself and as he prays for Silas and Timothy, he prays that God may deliver them from wicked, evil and faithless people. And these are people in our world today as well. Wicked, evil and faithless. Friends, the Apostle Paul and his team was familiar with suffering. Therefore, he asks, he requests that they pray for his deliverance. You'll remember that just before coming uh, to Thessalonica, they were in the city of Philippi. And in that city, they suffered greatly and they were imprisoned because of the word of God. So Paul, Silas and Timothy was familiar with suffering because of the word. And so he, he, he requests uh, that they pray for their deliverance. Now friends, as we reflect on Paul's uh, prayer request uh, this morning, it's obvious that we cannot pray for Paul, Silas and Timothy because they have long passed away. However, the principle is that we should be praying for gospel workers, men and women who love the Lord, men and women who love God's word. Maybe that's you this morning who want to take the gospel uh, to the ends of the earth. We need to be praying for our gospel workers. We need to be praying uh, for our church pastors, our church leaders, our Sunday school teachers, our youth leaders, and so on. We need to pray for them that God may use them in a powerful way. Uh, we, we must pray that they be effective in sharing the gospel. 
We may pray that God uh, must give them open doors uh, so that they can share God's word to people. We must pray for their safety as well. For, for many uh, who go into difficult countries, uh, sharing the gospel is not easy. Uh, sometimes their lives are at risk. And so we must pray uh, for men and women who take the gospel uh, to difficult parts of the world. Pray that God will provide all their needs. Pray that God's kingdom may grow as a result of their ministry. And so this morning, uh, as we reflect on uh, this uh, chapter, as we uh, reflect on other matters uh, that uh, Paul is speaking about, he reminds us here of the priority of prayer. My brother, my sister, it's impossible for you and I as Christians to function without prayer. Prayer is how we talk to God. Prayer is how we get our power uh, to continue to serve the Lord. And the prayer that he's speaking about here is not a prayer of Lord bless me, touch me, no. It's a prayer of, of earnest intercession. It's a prayer of opening up our hearts uh, before the Lord and, and really uh, having a conversation with the Lord Jesus. My brother, my sister, as you reflect on your own prayer life this morning, what is it like? Is it a strong prayer life? Is it a, a weak prayer life? Or is it a non-existent prayer life? I trust that you and I will be men and women of prayer. Praying for our gospel workers. Praying uh, that the word may go forth with much power, changing the lives of people, changing our society. Pray that God's word will be sown in good soil, bearing much fruit in the lives of people. Well, secondly, this morning, he has a word of encouragement. Have a look there at verse 3 and verse 5. He says, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your heart into God's love and Christ's perseverance. A word of encouragement. Well, notice uh, three encouragement uh, he shares here uh, for these believers. He just spoke to us about men who are wicked, evil and faithless, who oppose uh, God's word and God's people. But in light of that, he says, as a contrast, our God is faithful. People may be faithless, but our God is faithful. And notice what our God does here. He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. And these are very encouraging words for these believers uh, in the time of persecution. God will strengthen you. God will protect you from the evil one. Notice he also says, and he is confident and encouraged by their walk in the Lord. See, my brother, my sister, these are genuine Christians. These are men and women uh, who really love the Lord. They are going through a tough time, yes, but they have not uh, given up in their walk with the Lord. They have not fallen away. No, they continue to serve the Lord despite the many challenges they face. And the Apostle Paul is greatly encouraged by this. My brother, my sister, I trust that that is true for you and I as well. Uh, we will go through difficult times in our walk with the Lord. Maybe you are right now. But if not, uh, you can be sure that sometime uh, in the future, some challenge, some hardship, some difficulty will come your way. And in that moment, my brother, my sister, we need to be strong in the Lord. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus and not give up in our walk with the Lord. And thirdly, notice he says there, May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. In other words, he says to them, May you continue to grow 
in love and perseverance. And they have been doing this. They have been growing all the time. And he says, may you continue to grow. We can never have enough love in our hearts. We need to continue growing in God's love. And we need to persevere until the very end. A word of encouragement. What wonderful words for these believers to hear. What wonderful words for you and I to hear. Maybe you are, maybe you are going through a difficult time right now. What wonderful words for you and I to hear this word of encouragement. The Lord is with you and I. He is faithful. He will strengthen. He will protect us from the evil one. Well, he understands the priority of prayer. He has a word of encouragement. Thirdly, notice that he has a painful command. Verse 6. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we command you, brothers, to keep away from every brother who is idle and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. This is a very, very painful command. It's painful because it has the potential to lead to separation within the church. Notice his command there, to keep away, keep your distance, or stay away from every brother who is idle and disruptive. That is a command, it's not a suggestion. Now the word idle is usually associated with laziness. But as we have seen in 1 Thessalonians uh, and here as well, uh, it's more than just laziness. It means to be out of line or to be disorderly. That's what the word idle actually means here in this context. You see, there are those in the church here in Thessalonica who have become, first of all, dependent on the generosity of other believers. They have become lazy, yes, and they have seen and experienced that other believers are meeting their needs. And they have become so dependent on their generosity that they are not doing anything to meet their own needs. And then there are those who are unnecessarily interfering in the lives of other believers, leading to chaos and disharmony in the church. See, Paul refers to these idle and disruptive men and women in the church as busy bodies. They gave you the impression that they were busy, hard at work, but in fact their work was unproductive. It wasn't good work. It was disastrous work. And Paul says we must keep away from people like this in the church. Do you know people like this in your church, in our church? Then keep away from them, God's word says. But maybe you are someone like this and maybe you need to reflect on your own life and make changes in your own life. Listen to Paul command to them uh, in verse 11. We hear that some among you are idle, disorderly. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and, earn and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread they eat. You see, don't be sponging off people all the time. Don't be dependent on people to provide for you all the time. No, he says, earn the bread that you eat. And as for you, brothers, never tire of doing what is right. So Paul also uh, commanded the church to keep away uh, from uh, not just those who are idle and disruptive, but also from those who are disobedient, those who fail to follow their example and their teaching. Have a look there at verse 7. He says, For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day 
laboring and toiling so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to make ourselves a, a mortal, an example for you to follow. For even uh, when we were with you, we gave this rule. If a man will not work, he shall not eat. There were those in the church, my brother and sister, who saw no value in working. Therefore, Paul says to, the, to those who are unwilling to work, they shall not eat. They were unwilling to work. Friends, there are those who are struggling to find a job. They have sent out their CVs. They have gone for the interviews, but there has been no success. No doors of opportunity has been opened for them. They have tried everything. And these are men and women who, when they come to us, we should be able to help. But then there are those who are just not willing to work. They may have skills, they may be healthy and strong, but they're not prepared to send out their CVs. They're not prepared to go for those job interviews. They're just unwilling. And when they come to us for help, then these are the ones we should not help. These are the ones Paul is speaking about. If you do not work, you should not eat. Friends, in our church today, in society today, we are faced with two groups of people who are struggling, those who can't find job and those who are not prepared to work. And may God give us much discernment uh, as we reach out and help and make a, different, a difference in the lives of people. May God help us to know which of these needs are genuine and which are not. And so we are reminded of the priority in prayer. We have a word of encouragement. We have a painful command to keep away from those who are idle and disruptive. And then lastly, we have a blessed desire. Verse 16. Paul says there, Now may the Lord of peace himself Give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. What a wonderful and glorious desire uh, this is for people who are suffering. May the Lord of peace, our God is a God of peace. May he give you peace at all times and in every way. What a, what a wonderful desire this is for God's people. My brother, my sister, if you are going uh, through a, a challenge right now, through a difficult time right now, uh, what a wonderful desire this is for you. And I pray uh, that God may give you peace in your life right now. I pray that God may fulfill every desire of your heart right now. And so as we uh, reflect on uh, this passage concerning other matters. The priority of prayer. Is prayer a priority for you? Are you a man and a woman of prayer? The word of encouragement. Are you an encourager? Do you spend time encouraging people from God's word? A painful command. Uh, we are to keep away from those who are idle. Listen there to uh, what Paul says again in verse 14. Take special note of anyone who does not obey our instruction uh, in this letter. He says to them, do not associate with them in order that they may feel ashamed Yet do not regard them as an enemy. Warn them as you would a fellow brother. And so it's not so that uh, we can treat them as enemies that we keep away from them because they are idle and disruptive and disobedient. It is so that we can warn them, so that we can bring them to a place of repentance where they may change their behavior 
uh, in their lives. And then lastly, uh, we will remind you here of a blessed desire, a desire for peace. The Lord Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. We need to be peacemakers and we need to pray for peace, God's peace, a lasting peace in our lives and in the lives of God's people. May God help us to do just that. Come, let's pray. So, Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And so, Lord, we know that the Apostle Paul was concerned about several matters. The priority of prayer, a word of encouragement, but also a word of warning and a blessed desire, a desire for peace. Father, we pray for our own prayer life. We pray, Lord, that it may be strengthened that it may be encouraged, that it may be strong, O oh God. Father, I pray for any in our church or anyone we may know who is idle, disruptive, disobedient, lazy. Lord, we bring them before you, O oh God. Father, we pray that you may minister to their hearts, that they may change their ways. Our oh, Father, we pray that your peace may come and fill our hearts. This we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. God bless.